do this. Let's do it. Alright. Hi again, everybody. Hello. I'm Daryl. And I'm Kim. We are RV Adventure TV. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook, Bookface. Facebook. He calls it Bookface. I call it Bookface. <laughs> RV Adventure TV. We post some pictures there that we don't uh, necessarily put on YouTube because right. you can't put pictures on YouTube. Well, you can, but we don't. And also, we're going to have uh, uh, some other little odds and ends videos that you won't see on YouTube. So check it out. And, uh, and also, if you, if you got a minute, go subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And give us a comment. We're always willing to listen to what you got to say. We've already made, made some changes with uh, what some other people said. So, hey, we're out here just to have fun. We're no pros at this. This is what we do. May not work for you. It's just our opinion. Take it for face value. That's right. Everybody's got their own yep. way of doing things. Today we're sponsored by Good Attitudes. We are wine and Crown. Wine and Crown. This is the first Crown Royal I've had. Probably uh, five months, golly. Yeah. It's been a long time. Uh, we've been going through a lot to get where we're at. We're in Mota Moab, Utah. We are at the uh, campground. What's the name of the campground again? The campground is Archview. Archview resort. Campground and Resort. Right off Highway 191 west of uh, uh, Moab and just right next door to uh, Arches National Park. So we're here. We're going to do a little Q&A today, answer some questions. Everybody, including me, wanted to know what's the difference from going from a Class A. We, we, we had Betsy. Go back and look at her old videos. You'll see Betsy. She's gone. And now we are in Maddie. Maddie's a 2011 Heartland, Heartland Landmark uh, San Antonio version. And uh, if you want to check her out, go back to some of our other videos. We give you a good walkthrough on it. But uh, the first question, you want to take that? That's from Sharon. That's from Sharon. She's looking forward to comparing the Class A to the fifth wheel. All right, let's let's. She's got pros and cons. Yep, ladies first. Let's let's talk, uh, Kim. I guess you can talk about the ride difference from being on the passenger seat in Betsy, which is our Class A, to uh, Maddie and our Chevy 2005 uh, uh, one-ton dually pickup truck. So talk about that, how your ride was, convenience, and stuff like that. It was a lot smoother, a lot better being in the fifth wheel and driving in a vehicle instead of being in the motorhome. But, I mean, Princess, she loved it. I mean, when we were in the motorhome, she panted, she, she was just, she, she couldn't get comfortable, it was just horrible for her. She hated the, the noise and everything that came with the motorhome. Um, but it had its pros too. If you had to go potty, you could go back there and potty. You could get you a drink. But we do bring a little ice chest with drinks and stuff like that in there. But I mean, you could get make a sandwich. You could do whatever you wanted to do while you were driving down the road. So it had its pros and its cons. But if I had to compare the two, I would pick the truck versus the motorhome. The motorhome chairs are very comfortable. Uh, they make them that way because it's a lot of seat time and you can turn around and use them in the coach to sit down. But our seats are comfortable. But the, the seats in, in, in this Chevrolet Silverado uh, 3500 was was very comfortable. Um, there was no way I could go that far. Well, no. I, I could, but I'd be very uncomfortable and by the time I got to my de destination, you know, some days we put on 10 hours of driving, I would have been so worn out and frazzled, I don't know how good I would have been the next day. So, for comfort, I'm going fifth wheel. And, All the way. In a, in a heavy duty truck. It didn't bounce uh, around, but we'll talk about that later. But it's riding in the seats, we stop and get gas every what? Three hours. Something I can go like about. That, yeah. I can go about 300 miles. I think to a tank, be safe and not worry about running out. And by that time, yeah. we're ready to get out. Yeah, I need to get out. Let Princess out. Let Princess do her thing, and, and Kim can use the restroom. I can use the restroom. We can walk around, make sure the rig's okay. As you've seen in some videos, it's always nice to stop yeah. and check and see what's dragging. Some things are not all okay. And for all you people 
back around the Texas Louisiana line that bolts and stuff was flying off. <laughs> and you're watching this, I apologize. And, and call your insurance agent. It's called road hazard. Another thing, though, you have to realize is Daryl has always owned a motorhome. This is the first time he's had a fifth wheel. Yep. And for him to actually be this impressed with a fifth wheel, it must be pretty good. Yep. And this is, I mean, the Heartland uh, landmarks are made excellent. It's got the easy flex uh, axles underneath of it, so it rides good. Uh, yeah. And it, it weighs over, a lot. Know, it's over, mm -hmm. yeah, it weighs over 11, 12,000 pounds. I mean, and you have to say exactly how much it weighs, but it weighs a lot, so that helps you ride it. But right. the truck's got the 6.6 .6 Duramax diesel in it. Didn't even know uh, Maddie was even behind it until I looked in my rear view mirror and couldn't see backwards. I always have to use my side mirror. So now, as far as that goes, it's okay. yeah, it, it's she good. pulled it up and down the hills. We didn't hear any of that shifting down real hard like you do in the gas burner class A. Some of y'all out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's like, oh God, here comes a hill, oh Lord. So we talked about last year when we were driving the class A was, man, it's just so hard going up and down these hills and the brakes and, and just trying to get up the hills and downshifting. We had a 460 Ford engine in the uh, 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 1996 Newmar Mountaineer, 38 foot. And beautiful coach. That was a nice motorhome. Hung together real good, went over some stuff we shouldn't have gone, but anyway, uh, as far as just enjoying the ride and not have to do a bunch of stuff, I'm going the, yeah. uh, the truck and the fifth wheel all the way. And you don't have to get anything this big, you know, but with no. the weight on the truck, you know, there's only one or two really bad bumps that we hit the rest of the time. Uh, they rode over it really good. And I remember you making the comment when we were coming through Dallas. You said there is no way I could have pulled this motorhome with the Jeep in this much traffic with road construction and still drove five hours after that. You that's know, right. I mean, it was it was really crazy. And that's another thing: um, the difference between a Class A and a fifth wheel. When I drove the Class A and I'm driving. You have an 18 wheeler coming up passing you going in the same direction as you you can feel that air moving you around in the class a in the fifth wheel didn't feel it at all didn't notice it, it was one of the big things i noticed because usually in the class a patrick i know you're watching you can testify to this put it in the comments below when them 18 wheelers come up on you they move you around it's like you almost got to get ready yep. for it or if they got some side wind you've got to fight the steering wheel hard now this was in my uh, motorhome, these newer ones or whatever may be different. Right. Maybe some of y'all can comment on that or what your opinions are on that. But it's like you pulled you or something. The, the, yeah, it's like with 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 the Chevy and, and pulling Maddie. It was no big deal. Didn't know it. if they were coming the other way on a two lane road. It didn't bother me at all. It was fantastic. So that was a very good advantage, and that stopped me from being wore out, stressed out, white knuckle driving with the Class A because I'd always get ready for something or I could see one coming and I said, oh, here we go. And exactly. some of them go pretty fast because we never went that fast with the... Uh, it would have taken us a lot longer to get here if we'd been in the motor home. There's and again, no way. made my uh, driving experience a lot better, more comfortable, kicked back. We could actually put the radio on. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't stressing by the I time we got I was not stressed out, so I could... Except Which is good. After the first four or five hours. When if it's no fun driving and, and doing it, then I mean... Yep. And so far getting around, we went to what, three Walmarts. Only one Walmart that we went to was in Gallup. Uh, we got in there and got out as fast as we could. Not a place like I want to want to stay overnight in. Uh, it's cramp quarters. You know, looked like a nice Walmart, but uh, I wouldn't recommend staying there. We Had drove up to Cortez, house. Colorado. So uh, love our Walmarts. Shopping yes. our Walmarts. Uh, and we appreciate and thank Walmart for letting us stay there. Of Saved course. us a lot of money. But uh, as far as ride goes, very good. Now, let's talk about uh, the size difference between the Class A setting up and, and living in it full time between the Class A and, and Maddie. Well, if you're in one spot set up, this, I think, is better. 
because you have the slides and everything else. Now, if you're traveling, I honestly think something four feet shorter for would a be fifth better. wheel. For a fifth wheel, yes, right, would be better because then you can get into some of your state parks or your national things. It's not so long. I mean, it takes up a this thing takes up a lot of room, and if I had to do it over again. I probably would get something a little shorter. Now, if I was going to be somewhere and stay in somewhere permanently in this, this would be perfect. Right. But we're not, so. And we'll see there's some other videos coming up when we start getting in some areas where we want to go. Uh, we'll find out how it is to back it in. With a motorhome, it's no big deal. It's, it's second nature to me. It's like backing up a car. It's not that big a deal. And, and uh, I've backed up plenty of hitch vehicles in my day of construction. and and farming and stuff like that so I'm not too worried about it it's just the size and how much room that you got because more than likely if you're in an RV park or a yeah. state park you've got campers right in front of you and you know how RV parks people park they, yeah. you only got so much room to jackknife it around and get it in your hole and when you're 55 feet long so that's... that'll be interesting but as far as size wise I love living in the fifth wheel there's yeah. lots more room there's lots more storage we got the bed of the truck that we can use stuff. Uh, I just think we can walk around the bedroom. We can, you know, you can actually make the bed. Yep. Without having to climb on top of it, and I know you know what I'm talking about. And try to get the sheets on there. You can actually walk around it and make up your bed and change the sheets. It's really nice. I mean, mm -hmm. I couldn't ask for anything nicer than this. Now, the only thing that I've really noticed between this unit here. And our Class A, yeah. for some reason, this unit gets warmer faster. I, as insulating value, even though this is yes. a four-season rig, maybe it's because it's I bigger. Agree. Maybe it's because it's got more glass. But y'all saw know. the thickness of the walls. I think it's because of the slides or something or the. I don't know, but this thing really does get hot. And it's got two air conditions. We actually had somebody out here, Gary before we left to make sure and everything was fine. So it has nothing to do with the Freon. Everything's been checked. Everything is working fine. Yep. But it just not, it needs a third air condition, I think, in here. Yep, there's something in, in this unit, it probably would best to have a, 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 a third unit or, yep. I don't know what to say, it's not insulated enough, of course, we were in Louisiana. Yeah. But it, in, the, in the afternoon sun is the only time it, it bothers us. Right. It seemed like maybe because it was less square feet in the motorhome, less to heat up. I don't and, well, know. Well, I'm thinking also, too, you only had the one slide. Yep. Maybe this so. you got the four slides, and then you do get air in with these slides, yep. you know. There's I mean, a lot I more volume know. to cool down. And with, yeah. the, with the, and a lot more windows. With the uh, Newmar Mountain Air, maybe it was a smaller you know, cubic feet volume-wise, yeah. and it didn't take as much to cool it down. But, but I mean, the air conditioners work. They do what they're supposed to do. But, uh, you know, 3 or 4 o'clock on a good 80, 90 degree day. Uh, oh, you'd rather be outside. It starts to get warm. Now, I guarantee you, if I was in Phoenix, Arizona right now, which uh, my sister lives down there, uh, it was 100 degrees. There's no way I would live in this. We'd probably you, be you trading this thing in. Trust you couldn't me. keep it cool enough. Unless we put all the reflectors in the windows. So we're going we're gonna to give it some more chances to, to do some stuff. Um, yeah. But as far as insulating value, uh, with with air conditioners and and the new Mar Mountain Air compared to this, I'll take the, that Class A any, any day, day of the week. We never got hot in there no. uh, at all. And, and I mean, this has got those um, the seamless, you know, they're the. It's got the frameless windows. They're all smoked. Yeah. I mean, so their reflectability should be good. But you can actually feel the heat on them. Yeah. Let me see if I can find that core up here real quick, and it I can really I can show you all. Get warm, and then it'll get so warm in here, it'll actually make the temperature on the refrigerator go up too. See, this is what I showed before in one of my previous. We put the dryer in. This is the outside of the walls of this rig, and you can see that's probably maybe seven sixteenths thick on the outside, and maybe a quarter inch on the inside. And the rest of it is just high density uh, foam, some type like a styrofoam or something. And this is the inside wall of the, our closet where the dryer was, where we cut this hole out to get the vent for the dryer. But that is actually the thickness of our exterior wall. 
So it's plenty thick and you'd think it would be plenty insulated, so we're losing something somewhere. I would love to see how thick it is in the new more. I just think a, a new more to me is just a very well built coach. Yep. You just can't, it's, it's a, it's a, and the Heartland Landmark is supposed yes, to be one of the too, top of the lines, and it are, is as far as everything and real wood and how right. everything's made and holding up. I mean, but we're really happy with this. But heating and cooling, I'm going with uh, our old Class A. Now, your Class A may be different. And it only had, no, it did have the two units. We only ran one unit in that, and we still stayed cooling. Yep, so must be just more volume air and, and more surface area to get warm and more windows, I guess. But uh, we got the reflective deals that can go in the windows, so we'll give that a try here when it gets uh, a little bit warmer and see if that makes a difference. <laughs> Princess was sitting here just now. <laughs> That's our little Yorkie. We're going to do a special on her uh, when we get up to our boondocking spot. See, so look at her. She's panting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, "It's hot, Mama." <laughs> but uh, as far as it goes right now. Uh, all you uh, Class A uh, people out there, comment down below. Tell me what you think. Really want to know. When we get to Washington State, after we get done up there staying with my sister for the summer months and it starts to get cooler, we may head down the Oregon coast. We may take this in and trade it in on a, a smaller fifth wheel. You never know. We may trade it in on a back to a Class A. We may uh, sell this outright and maybe put a truck camper on. No, we're not doing that. Well, never mind. We're not doing that. But, hey, as far as it goes right now, we love Maddie. Love going up and down the road. Stay tuned when we start getting in some park areas. Maybe we'll get <laughs> uh, Kim to film me when I'm backing it in, give you a oh, really Lord. good, really good uh, uh, laugh. But anyway, we thank everybody. We appreciate uh, you uh, watching, watching us on our journey. Driving. Look forward. We're it gonna means have a lot to us. It really does. Yep, we appreciate it. Uh, we're growing real fast on subscribers, uh, so please tell everybody. And again, don't forget our Bookface channel, RV Adventure <laughs> TV. Uh, I don't do the Twitter or the tweet things yet. Uh, right now, our phones go off so much with the, the notices and stuff, but we enjoy it. We appreciate it. Put your comments down below. Anything that you want to see while we're here in the Moab area. Uh, appreciate Alan. Appreciate Ralph. And... Uh, there's a bunch of other people on here uh, that's been here before, gave us some great tips. We're going to go check those out. So uh, until then, uh, wait for our future videos. We're having a blast. Yep. Stop the madness. Start the adventure. See you later. Bye.